I'm Tiffany Trapuzio Wong, and this is the second video in the Aruvabods Automate with Ansible series. Last video, I introduced you to the overall architecture of Ansible, and today I'm going to show you how to build your inventory file, in addition to show you how to write a playbook from scratch using the AruboOS switch modules. Before we get started, there are a few basic concepts that I want to go over. First is the term variable. This is a very common concept in programming. And essentially, a variable is a named object used to store information. Information stored into a variable can be simple, like a number or text information, or it can be more complex, like a Boolean or a dictionary. Here's a quick example of a variable used in Python. In this example, we have the variable mask and we're setting it equal to the value 24. Wherever we were to use the variable mask in its place, its value 24 will replace it. So in this instance, when we were to print the variable mask in its place, the value 24 will be printed out. Next is the concept of a dictionary. A dictionary is a data structure that has keys that correlate to a value. Next we have YAML. YAML stands for yet another markup language, and it's typically used to structure and format data in a file. And this is primarily the language that we'll be using when interacting with Ansible. YAML is white space sensitive and case sensitive. In regards to formatting, we want to use indentation with spaces. Typically, we use two spaces per indentation. Let's look at an example. Data in a YAML file are typically lists or even dictionaries or even lists of dictionaries. Lists are started by having a dash followed by a space and dictionaries are defined by the key, colon, space, then the value. It's very important that a single space follows the dash and the colon when using lists and dictionaries. Oftentimes when using YAML, a lot of your errors are gonna be about incorrect spacing or inefficient spacing. So just keep an eye out for that. In this example, we have two entries in a list and both are dictionaries. The first entry in the list is VLAN 100 and it has two keys, IP and mask. The last concept I'll go over is a function. A function is essentially a section of code that you'll call upon to perform a specific task. Think of it like a procedure that does all the work for you given certain parameters. Typically functions take in arguments and depending on their functionality, they actually may return values to you. In this Python example, we have the function add3 that takes a single argument number. This function then returns that number passed in plus three. So if I were to call the function and pass in the number four, the number seven would be returned. Ansible's inventory, like I mentioned in the last video, defines all the devices that we want to use Ansible with and all their information. The inventory can be a single file or a series of files. And in those files, we'll define variables that Ansible will use to communicate and configure our devices with. Your inventory file can contain several different types of hosts as well as different manufacturers. Ansible doesn't really care what's in your inventory as long as it's properly formatted and you know what to do with it. In addition to defining hosts, you can also define groups and even groups of groups. By default, all hosts are in the all group. And as you continue creating groups or even groups of groups, you'll end up creating a hierarchical like structure. Here's an example of a YAML inventory file. Think of this like a file as if we're defining dictionaries of dictionaries for Ansible to use. By default, all hosts are in the all group. So that's going to be our first line in our inventory file. Next, we can start defining our hosts or even our groups. To define groups, we want to use the children key followed by a colon. After that, all the names of our groups will be single indented underneath that children key. To define hosts, we use the hosts key followed by a colon, and all the names of our hosts will be single indented underneath that host key. Names of hosts are what Ansible uses to identify the hosts in your inventory. Think of it like an alias for your device. When using a RuboOS switch with Ansible, it can either be part of a group or just a single device in your inventory. It does, however, require specific variables to be set in order for Ansible to communicate with your device. The first variable is Ansible host. This is the IP address of the switch. 
And this is what Ansible is going to use to send those Rust commands to. The next two are Ansible user and Ansible password. This is the login username and password to your RubyOS switch. I know it might be scary putting these in plain text in this file, but in a video later on in the series, I'll show you how to encrypt this data using a feature of Ansible called Vault. Next, we have Ansible connection. In the last video, I told you how Ansible typically uses an SSH connection to communicate with devices, but with our Aruba switching modules, we use the REST API. When we set the Ansible connection to local, we're telling Ansible, don't use SSH, use the REST API connection. In addition, we have to set the Ansible network OS to Aruba OS S. So Ansible knows to use our Aruba OS switching modules to connect to the device execute the REST API commands, and then handle the logging out for us. That's the beauty of our modules. It handles all the nitty gritty of REST for you. Here's an example of an inventory file with an Aruba OS switch. Here we have the name of our host device, followed by the Ansible host defined with the IP of our device. And most importantly, we have those static values set. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create an inventory file from scratch. In today's video, I'm gonna be working with two Aruba OS switches. So I'll have to define both hosts in my inventory file. First, I'm gonna start off by defining my all group. And then since I'm just working with my two devices, I'm just gonna define my host without any groups. So I'm gonna have switch one, switch two, and now I have to define their IP addresses. And now I'm gonna start defining the login information to the device. So I have my Ansible user and my Ansible password. And this is the same for both devices, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this here. Next, I have to define those static values. And since again, this is the same for both devices, I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste that here. Once that's done, I'm all set. So now that we have our inventory file all set up, it's time to start writing a playbook. Playbooks are written in YAML and they're the automated instructions that Ansible will use to configure and communicate your device. The first line in a playbook defines the variable hosts. And this essentially tells Ansible which devices in your inventory to target when executing this playbook. This can be the name of a single host or even an entire group. A playbook is composed of one or more plays and the host line essentially defines the start of a play. A play is defined as being composed of one or more tasks. And essentially, after our host variable is where we start defining our tasks. The tasks variable is single indented underneath the host variable. Our tasks variable is essentially a list of tasks. A task typically begins with a task name, and then it's called to one or more modules. Modules are essentially functions. They're instances of Python code that you'll call within your Ansible playbook to configure your device. The name of your task essentially describes what's being done while your Ansible playbook is being executed. Though it's not 100% necessary, it is best practice to always include a name. Next, we have the name of our module that we want to use. In this instance, we're using the Aruba OSS VLAN module. Following the module name are the module arguments. You're going to pass parameters into the modules that essentially will be used to configure your switch. Variables can also be used in arguments to modules, but I'll discuss that in the next video of the series. Let's see how to write a playbook from scratch using our Aruba OS modules. To use our Aruba OS switching modules, refer to our module documentation found on our GitHub to see what parameters are used and examples on how to use them. So for today's video, I want to create VLAN 100. So I'm going to go to our module documentation for our Aruba OS switch, and I'm going to go to the VLAN module, since obviously I want to create a VLAN. And here I can see what arguments are supported in addition, which ones are required and which ones are actually optional. So here I can see that the command argument is required and it takes in these specific choices. In addition, the VLAN ID is also required, and that's essentially the VLAN ID that I'm going to be configuring. So I've opened up my instance of my blank playbook, and let's get started. Uh, the first line, if you remember, is defining our hosts. And let's just say I want to only configure VLAN 100 on my Switch 1 hosts. Following that, I start to define my tasks. 
Notice how I indented only once. This is crucial. And I start off by defining my task name. So again, every task is, is a part of a list, right? So the first thing is a dash followed by a space. And then I want to define the name of my task. So here I'm just going to say create VLAN 300. Again, single indented beneath the name, I'm going to put in the module name. In this instance, it's Aruba OSS VLAN. Again, indented. I'm now gonna pass in the parameters that I want the Aruba OSS VLAN module to use when configuring my device. So the first thing that was required was the command. Out of my choices, I'm gonna use config VLAN since I'm going to configure a VLAN. Next that was required was the VLAN ID. And I wanna create VLAN 300, so the ID is gonna be 300. I also maybe want to add a name to my VLAN, so I'll use this as well. And that's it. So here's my switch one. As you can see, I only have um, just two VLANs created. And now I'm going to, from my control machine, execute my Ansible playbook. Executing a playbook with Ansible is very simple. All you have to do is from the CLI, type in the Ansible playbook command, followed by the playbook that you want to run. In this case, it's my create VLANs. Now Ansible does have a default location where it looks for an inventory file. Uh, but in most cases, and in my experience, you're typically working with multiple inventories, whether that be a production inventory or a test inventory. So what I'm going to do is actually manually pass in and tell Ansible which inventory I want it to use. I do this by using the dash I option. Followed by the dash I option, you want to pass in the inventory file. Once that's done, you just hit enter. And that's it. Uh, so now if I go to my switch, show VLANs, you can now see I have VLAN 300 created with my name, this is VLAN 300. So in my last video, I mentioned that Ansible was idempotent. And essentially that means that when Ansible runs, it will actually validate the state of the system before pushing any configuration changes. If I were to run this playbook again, you notice the results were a little bit different. So when I went to go ahead and run the playbook again, it checked to see if VLAN 300 was existing, if it had the name configured in the way that I wanted it to. And then since everything was in the desired state, it didn't push any configuration changes. Now, when I created my playbook, I specified the host to be only switch one. But what if I wanted to run the playbook on all the switches in my inventory? To do this is actually pretty simple. Like I mentioned before, by default, all devices in your inventory are in the all group. So if I change my host variable to be now all and save that. So now here's my switch two. If I look, I still have only the, the two VLANs created. And now I'll execute my playbook again. And if you notice, it checked the state of the first switch, but when running the playbook against the second one, it noticed that the VLAN wasn't there and pushed the desired configuration changes. So now if I go to my switch two and do show VLANs, you can see there I now have VLAN 300 created. Now that I've got my playbook all set up, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more just to make it a little bit interesting. I, in addition to creating VLAN 300, I'm actually going to create VLAN 100 and using the same module, I'll be able to delete VLAN 300. So here, I'm going to create a task that creates VLAN 100. So not only are you able to create configurations with Ansible, you're actually able to delete information as well. So using the same module, I'm actually going to delete my VLAN 300. I simply have to change the config variable from create to delete. Now I'm gonna save that and rerun my playbook again. And so now if I go to my device, and do show VLANs, 
I can now see VLAN 300 is removed and VLAN 100 was created instead. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video of this ArubaBots Automate with Ansible series, where I take a deep dive into using variables and variable files with Ansible.